How's that? That close enough? Just kidding. Okay, there we go. Greetings one and all, and welcome back to Tom's at Braid. It is time for my bargain bag feature. Yes, that is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags from Skip's Records, from the late Skip's Records and CD World. Yes, uh, Skip's may be gone, but the bargain bag feature lives on because, yes, uh, over the course of his going out of business sale, I picked up enough mystery CD grab bags to uh, take this feature on through the end of 2021. Because, yes, I'm that crazy. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I just wasn't ready for the bargain bag feature to disappear quite so quickly. So, yeah, I just loaded up since I had the means and I had oh, just barely enough storage space. I thought, what the heck, uh, give the bargain bag feature a good long life so that that way skips will live on. But anyway, uh, in between these two uh, CD grab bag openings, I will review a CD that uh, I enjoy that you may be likely to possibly procure and purchase for a paltry pittance at a local music retailer near you. Well, I guess if it is near you, it would be local, wouldn't it? <laughs> anyway, uh, and also uh, before I open either of the two grab bags, I will quickly go through the CDs that I had in the last two mystery CD grab bags uh, last month. And well, this month it won't take very long. Uh, you might remember that uh, the overriding theme of last month's bags were hip-hop and rap. Uh, yes, a couple of, uh, you know, very uh, unmemorable CDs in that department. 12 Gauge and uh, Shade Scheist. I am not much for gangster rap to begin with. And that's basically what this 12 Gauge total uh, uh, disclaimer here. I don't know anything about the artist, but uh, just for some reason it's, he, he seemed very inauthentic, like he was just doing gangster rap just to do gangster rap, you know. And I think it was either, I think it was on this one. It might have been on on Shade Scheist. Uh, in one or two of the songs, they used uh, the sounds of gunshots as as percussion. And honestly, with all the uh, mass shootings that have been going on this, in the states recently, I mean that really rubbed me the wrong way. I just so yeah, I'm I can't get rid of these too fast enough. So. Uh, yeah, they were very un unmemorable, as I said, and also just not my genre. And uh, speaking of not my genre, another rap one, uh, Confrontation Camp. Yeah, just, what can I say? I'm not an authority on hip-hop or gangster rap, so I can't really comment as to the artistic merit of any of that stuff. It could have artistic merit, for all I know. But anyway, uh, George Younce, uh, Christian, and uh, uh, yeah, just very soft, acoustic Christian stuff. That's just about as not up my alley as gangster rap is, pretty much. Uh, although definitely for a different audience, let's just put it that way. Two very different audiences for those genres, trust me. And then we have a acoustic stuff. I honestly can't remember if this was instrumental or if it had vocals, but yeah. Uh, Kurtana, just very unmemorable. She might be good at what she does. It's just it just did not strike any chords with me at all, pun intended. Uh, and uh, Soma, yeah, another completely unmemorable. You know, I did listen to all these. It just you know this this tells you how little of an impression a lot of these make on me. Very inoffensive, unmemorable stuff. And then we get into the CDs that I sort of remember. Um, Brazen, the original soundtrack. This actually, I found out later, this was not any kind of a movie or anything. This was just marketed as a soundtrack. Uh, but yeah, just very unremarkable dance pop kind of stuff. You know, If you like dance pop, you might want this. And as I may have forgotten to mention, if you want any of these CDs that I'm casting off, let me know either in a comment here on this video or any direct message on Twitter. We can make arrangements. You can send me your mailing address. I can send these to you free of charge. I won't even make you pay postage unless you really want to. But uh, yeah, just dance-oriented stuff. Meh. It was two bags of meh, basically, from uh, last month. Uh, country Gold. This, yeah, I'm starting to like country music, but yeah, none of this stuff was particularly memorable. memorable. Uh, I, I do have to say I like uh, song titles uh, in country music. 
Uh, there, for instance, on here, there was a song by Johnny Paycheck called I'm the Only Hell Mama Ever Raised. So I suppose she could probably apply me apply that to me at some point in my childhood. But anyway, uh, Patsy Cline did a song called Pick Me Up on Your Way Down. You, you gotta love the song titles in country music, if nothing else. This one was a real disappointment. Colin Farish, uh, Curious Species was the name of the uh, album. And with the hype blurb on the back here, it says uh, a hybrid of world music and West Coast jazz, which got my hopes up. But, you know, when I came around to playing this, it was just very unmemorable jazz, you know, kind of kind of elevator music uh, to... I, I don't, don't like to disparage it like that, but that's kind of what it was, was elevator music, more or less. And then a couple of, of okay things, but not okay enough for me to keep them. Time and Distance, a uh, indie rock kind of stuff. Uh, they were okay. Yeah. Uh, Gravity is the name of the album. But yeah, it was, yeah, as I said, okay, just not enough for me to grab onto it, really. This one, I'm these next couple, I'm going to give a couple more listens to because uh, they they might uh, prove themselves to be uh, worthy of my collection. Yeah. Trying not to stick my nose up too much in the air from that. Uh, my regrets is the name of this uh, little indie rock act. Uh, this was a five track uh, EP. Not bad, kind of catchy. So yeah, I'll, I'll check that out, this out a little bit more. And then there were a couple of R and B albums in this. Uh, in the last two bags that uh, I'm gonna listen to at least once more. Dougie D here, uh, Do You All Wanna Ride? That's the name of the album. And then uh, then we have Johnny P, Look Good. Yeah, Dougie D and Johnny P. I'm kind of glad Johnny P didn't spell his last name the way that Dougie D did because, well, if it were that kind of P, it would be, well, you know. Anyway, um, and then uh, the one probable keeper in this uh, was the a CD single, actually. It was by PM Dawn, which was a R&B hip-hop group that uh, their heyday was in the mid to late 90s, I think. Uh, they had a couple of good singles. This is one that I do not remember hearing back in the day. So, yeah, I'll keep them, see, uh, see if it grows on me at all. And now that that is over with, uh, let's get to the first of the two grab bags. My trusty scissors here. Let's open them up and see what we've got. I'm trying to cut underneath the staples so I don't cut for absolutely no reason at all. But, uh, yep, looks like I do. And here we are, opening up the bag. I haven't done a thumbnail for the video yet, so I'm going to try and uh, do something clever here in between the uh, ends of the uh, video here. We have King, I guess, is the name of the artist. Time Move Over. He looks interesting. I don't know. Then we have December's January. I'm not sure what that is. This is a five song EP from an indie label in Wisconsin. Give that a try. Then we have. Smart Bomb, I guess that's the name of the band. <laughs> the name of the album is, yeah, well, anyway. See? That's what the album is called. Uh, and they look like they might be a, uh, oh, what's the guy's, uh, Sugar Ray or possibly a Bowling for Soup uh, knockoff band. So that's just, just from the way they dress, their appearance. I mean, they could be anything, but uh, yeah. It's on the Razor and Tie label. So. And then we have uh, Gus. That's the name of the artist. Word of Mouth Parade is the name of the album. I've seen this on the racks somewhere. So uh, I know that toward the end of the closing of the store, they started taking stuff off the bargain wall and putting it in grab bags just to sell it. So that might be where I remember seeing this. And I don't know, honestly, if this was one of the most recent grab bags that I got or if this is one of the first. So this could have been assembled during the going, going out of business sale. So for all I know, but anyway, yeah. Give these guys a try. I'm saying that a lot, aren't I? Yeah, I'll give this a try. Give these guys a try. Of course I'm going to. That's the whole purpose of this. Anyway. Uh, Peter Walker. Uh, young Gravity is the name of the album on Danger Bird Records. Fans of Neil Young and Wilco should keep Peter Walker on their radar. I'm not particularly a fan of either, but uh, I am always up for listening to something new. Then we have Crust. 
why not listen to a rock band named Crust? Assuming they're a rock band. Uh, Coded Language is the name of the album. I really can't comment anything on these uh, artists because I don't know what kind of music they put out. <laughs> Carnival Strippers. That's the name of this uh, band here. And it looks like a co-ed band. It looks like there might be a uh, woman in the group. This looks like a woman, possibly. So, yeah, what the hell. Give it a try. That'll be a good image for the uh, thumbnail. Okay, that is it for the first of the two grab bags. Okay, and now on to the CD I will be reviewing for you today. Uh, this is one you will uh, probably find in the bargain bin of your local music retailer. I know I have before, and it, it was actually at Skip's. Uh, it wasn't in the bargain section, but it was just, you know, in the regular A to Z rock section. And I think it might have even been there on their very last day. Uh, but I didn't pick it up because I'm not sure if uh, any of the friends for whom I am actually currently building small stacks of CDs to send to them at a later, later date uh, will necessarily be into this kind of thing or not. Uh, so I let it go. I passed it up. Uh, it'll probably show up at a garage sale or something now that Skips is closed. But anyway, this is a rock band out of New Orleans, Louisiana. They are called Dead Eye Dick, and this is their uh, debut album called A Different Story. Brain fart, sorry. Uh, now, they are most famous for the song New Age Girl, which was uh, it was their one hit. They were a one-hit wonder, really. And that song gained fame uh, for its appearance in the movie Dumb and Dumber. It was a comedy movie. Uh, and, and that song is on this album, by the way, uh, New Age Girl. Now, these guys remind me a lot of Bare Naked Ladies uh, in their more rock albums. Uh, you know, uh, in the days when they didn't have the, uh, didn't still have the upright acoustic bass, you know, when they were much more of a rock band and they're, you know, from like their third album onwards. Uh, and also, not just because of their sound, but also in the fact that uh, they've been basically unnecessarily pigeonholed as a novelty band because their one big hit single had a lot of comedy in it uh, and and bare naked ladies bigger singles are the more light-hearted ones uh, one week was probably in some ways is considered a novelty song and that's that was the bare naked ladies biggest hit but also very much like the bare naked ladies a lot of uh, you know nobody except their fans know that their album songs their deeper cuts have a lot of substance and seriousness to the lyrics. Uh, not all the time, but, you know, a, a fair amount of the time. Now, New Age Girl is one of the exceptions, as I said. It's definitely a humorous song. It's about a hippie ve vegetarian woman who's captured the heart of the protagonist in the song. And there is a slight bit of vulgarity in the chorus, I mean, depending on your sensibilities. Uh, no actual foul language, just, you know, sexual connotation in the lyrics. But the song really scores points uh, and, you know, the band themselves, who, the guys who wrote the lyrics, scored points for being able to rhyme the words vegetarian and septuagenarian. And now uh, I was talking a minute ago about uh, substance in the lyrics, and this uh, album has uh, quite a bit of that. There's a song on here called Perfect Family, which is in direct contrast to its title. It's about a dysfunctional family and the things that they go through. Uh, there's a song on here called Sentimental Crap, which is about, it, it's sung from the point of view of a man who's been through more than one failed relationship and has difficulty opening up emotionally to a new partner. So, you know, as you can see, there's there's a fair bit of substance to the lyrics in a lot of these songs. Uh, another standout on this album is a song called Marguerite, and that's probably my second favorite song on the album, uh, next to New Age Girl. Uh, it's a love song with uh, kind of a, a bouncy sound to it, a bouncy melody, and it's it's that melody has this, that kind of a timeless sort of a sound that brings to mind the Beatles. You know, it's just, it's such a simple, basic melody, but at the same time it's unique and feels like it's existed since the beginning of time, in a way. Uh, much like a lot of the Beatles songs, that's why I compare it to the Beatles. Uh, and, you know, it's just a very appealing song, and, and the vocal melodies on that song are pretty good, too. And there are other really good songs on here, like uh, toward the end of the album there's a song called Like a Shadow, which is it's you know it's another one of those nice bouncy songs, and uh, right after that one actually is a a lovely acoustic song called Molly, and uh, and one of the things about this band is that uh, a lot of the songs while they have upbeat melodies, they're uh, oftentimes juxtaposed with serious lyrics, so you know yeah if you're looking for substance in you know really good sounding pop music but with substance in the lyrics check out Dead Eye Dick uh, they actually did uh, a second album called Whirl and I have that one too 
uh, and but yeah, they were unfortunately for all the similarities similarities they have to bare naked ladies, they were not as lucky as bare naked ladies in terms of the longevity of their career. Uh, they yeah, they just did that second album and then they were gone. Uh, so they were really classified unfairly, in my opinion, to one hit wonder status uh, before breaking up after their second album. So yeah. Definitely an, an unsung jewel in that could be hiding in the bargain bin near you. Uh, Dead Eye Dick, their debut album, A Different Story. Go check it out. And just like that, we have arrived at the second of two bargain bags for this month. Unfold the, uh, whatever you call that up there, the top of the bag, technical term. And open the bag thusly. Now let's give this one a try here. See what's in it. First we have Serotonin. Escape from the Everyday is the name of the album. Yeah. Can't say anything about it because I've never heard of him before. So and then Rick Van Mater. Van March? I don't know. Uh, Lines Above is the name of the album. Yeah an eight track album. So yeah, we'll give that a try. Something tells me it's acoustic. Okay. Don't want to interrupt the pace of the video by staring at the uh, CD covers and reading them without saying anything. Then we have a classic collection by I'm not sure who. And it's all in the text on the back is all in German. So I have absolutely no idea what this is. Let's see if I can extricated from its sleeve. Oh, it's a classical collection. Oh, <laughs> and the quote on the inside is in English. Oh, actually everything on the inside is in English. The sleeve on the outer, just the outer sleeve is in German. So yeah, classic collection. Oh, that's why it's called classic collection. It's classical music. <laughs> and we have Jones, let them believe what they want to believe. Oh, uh, Ryan and Shyok will appreciate this. It says down here at the bottom, this CD can't get any more Canadian. So all the more reason for me to try it. I, I like Canadians. What can I say? I have a sp soft spot for them. So, yeah, this is a six, uh, six track album. So, and then we have uh, Joe DeJesu. I guess that's how you pronounce the name at the bottom of the CD there. Uh, Instant Gratification. Check that out and see what that's like. And just two more CDs left in this bag and then we're over with again. Oh, Big Car is the name of this band. Normal is the name of the album. And I've, I've seen this one here and there, out and about, hither and yon. So, uh, yeah, I, think, I think they're rock. I don't know that I've ever listened to it though. And then we have in the last bag here, J. Aaron is the name of the artist. Oh, the name of the band, I guess, because there's a whole bunch of guys there on the uh, cover, on, on the picture on the back. Uh, Inside Out is the name of the album. So, well, how's about that? Uh, that is the content of the two new mystery CD grab bags for this month. I, yeah, this, this video is just over way too quick every month. I, I love doing the bargain bags, as I've said time and again. Uh, just even if all the CDs are junk, uh, just opening them up and seeing what's inside is, is is a lot of fun. You never know what you're going to find, right? So, but anyway, that is it for Bargain Bag for the month of September 2019, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate the feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel, or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well, and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find the link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers' channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.